This incredible looking machine that you can see behind me, would you believe, is a super yacht tender. This is what they call a limo tender, and you'll see why it's called that when we go inside in just a minute. This is just over 10 meters long, it's about 35 feet. The other crucial measurement is the height, because from the very top of the cabin to the very bottom of the keel, it's just over two meters in height. And that is crucial because these are lifted aboard and put into gouges. They're usually lifted with beam cranes that come out of the side of the yacht, lift it up and move it in. And you find this kind of thing typically on super yachts of 80 meters plus. So really properly big league and the tenders have to be equally properly big league. The owners and the guests on yachts like that do not come aboard on ribs. <laughs> they come aboard on things like this it's amazing, isn't it? It looks almost like a spaceship. It's quite incredible. These are custom built, and so you can have pretty much whatever you want. Uh, you can also change the sizes. They, they do smaller ones and larger ones. Um, and it's a very serious boat in its own right. The, the power system in particular, it's hybrid power. And we'll come to that, of course, but we'll step on here and I'll give you a walk through it because it is quite a unique machine. So you've got a handle here to help you on board. This, of course, comes out, so you lower that important air draft. You step on here, and then you've got this cockpit area. Now, guests can sit out here if they want a bit of fresh air. Normally, they would tend to be inside, and I'll show you that in just a moment, but you have got this outside area. They've also put lockers underneath here, so you know, people's handbags, that kind of stuff, can just be tucked away out of the way, or if you want to have drinks in there, that kind of stuff, then you can do that. There's a bigger locker underneath here for life jackets and safety equipment and so forth. And this is where the crew would helm it from. And you start to see how serious this boat is when you look at things like, for example, there's a full operational system on here. We're on lighting at the moment, but we can come across to the air conditioning supplies, the temperature, the battery status, all that kind of stuff is all controlled from here, switch gears, that kind of thing. The other thing that you've got on here as well, actually, is control for a sea keeper. It's actually got stabilization on here as well. Now, they've put four screens on here deliberately so that you don't have to come out of this to get to navigation and go back into it to navigation. You can have dedicated navigation here, dedicated ship control here, and then these are for each of the engines. They're hybrid drive, so this is giving you diesel and electric monitoring. I'll show you that when we get to the back and explain it in a bit more detail. Other things we've got here, control switches for the screens. These are touch screens as well, of course. You have got VHF radio. There is digitally proportional bow and stern thrust. It's very important when you're maneuvering these things with the owner on board. You do not want to get it wrong. This is interesting. This is a control for the steering. What this means is that it's electronic steering. At low speed, it's quite direct. So it's only like a, you know, a turn or two to go from lock to lock. So when you're maneuvering, you can spin it from lock to lock really quickly. The problem with that typically is when you're running fast, it's very overly sensitive. So with this, it's proportional. As the boat speeds up, it applies more turns to go from lock to lock, so it's less sensitive and also weights it up a little bit. You've got zip wake controllers on here as well for the, uh, for the trim tabs, and then there's your engine controls just here. So very comprehensive helm. This seat's quite interesting because you can either use it like a sort of jockey seat where you sort of grip it, or you can spin it round and sit on it, and then you're down under that screen. So you've got that ability as well if you prefer. If we come on back a little bit further then, you've got access on this side exactly as we had on the other side. You can see how that top step, in fact, folds over. That's with it folded up. Look at the stainless steel on here. I mean, the whole point of these is if you've got an 80-metre yacht, so what's that? Typically, sort of 80 million plus, you don't want a tender that's not living up to that expectation. So this is at that sort of level of quality. It's quite incredible. And these are seven-figure boats in their own right. If we head on back a bit further then, this is accessing into the cabin. So there's a switch over here. Now there's actually an air seal that runs around this. So it blocks out all the noise, all the drafts, everything. So you get a really quiet, comfortable ride. If I touch that there, there's a pause while that air seal deflates and then that powers open. And the whole point of this is to give that super yacht feel as soon as you step onto the tender. You don't need to wait to get out to the main boat. So if we look in here, it's all, of course, leather upholstered. Look at the details of these Falcon logos across here that matches, obviously, the logo of the boat. Um, and they're set out slightly from the sides of the boat as well, so it feels a little bit more like freestanding furniture. This floor looks like marble. It's actually porcelain. Quite incredible. The attention to detail is fantastic. The woodwork in here is bamboo. 
and then you've got this beautiful headlining and there's this huge skylight in the ceiling. They put big windows in here as well. So you've got windows here and windows down here. That's actually quite important because people coming out to super yachts, they're not necessarily boaty people. They might just be people who are guests of the owner coming out for a nice time on the boat. And so if they're not used to boats, you want to be able to see the horizon and not start feeling ill as soon as you get on board. So that does that. You've got a hi-fi system in here, of course. You can see the speakers for it here and here. The whole interior of this, that display that we saw that controls the whole boat, you can echo it with this controller here. You can also access the music. And that can be configured so that you can either get into everything. So if the owner's on board and wants to be able to access all the systems of the boat, he can. But if you've just got guests on board, you don't want them fiddling with stuff you can configure that so that it's just giving you access to the air conditioning and the lighting and the stereo in here. They're not going to start switching pumps on and off or stopping the engines. Also, you can uh, rig that to display uh, charts and that kind of stuff. And of course, part of the custom nature of this, if you want displays up on here showing where you are, then you can have that as well. There's a huge skylight in the ceiling, like so. Power that door back shut again, actually, and you can get the feel of how this is. There we go. Look how even these have got the little Falcon logo on them. There we go. All we've got now is the gentle hum of the air conditioning. And the air conditioning actually pulls the air in through these vents here and it exits it out from down behind here. So you don't feel the sort of the, you know, the flow of the air conditioning. It just feels nice and cool. But the whole point, the whole point of this is to make you feel like you've arrived before you've even arrived. It's spectacular. But also spectacular is the drive system. We're going to look at that next. There's another access out of the back here. The button for that then is here. Same system. It's got the inflating um, seals around the edge. So if you touch that, they deflate. And then that powers open like so. There's a deck here. You've got little seats for crew here as well. So, of course, you know, you might have maybe four crew and your guests heading for the mothership. So you've got people who can sit out here as well if they want to. And they've come right to the very back. Look at these carbon fibre masts here for the enzymes. And again, you've got a plug-in uh, handrail so people can step off the back if that's easier. And there's a little button underneath here, which if I find it, This then is hybrid drives. So you've got diesel and you've got electric. There are uh, 20 kilowatt electric motors and the engines are 270 horsepower each. And what that means is you've got 20 kilowatts of batteries, that's per side. So you've got 20 kilowatts this side, 20 kilowatts that side. That means you get an hour's running at up to about eight knots. So it means when you're motoring into the harbor or you're motoring out to the yacht, you can do it completely silently if you wish. There's a generator in here as well. That rarely gets used because there's another 11 kilowatts of house batteries there across here. That's running things like your air conditioning systems, your lighting, your music, all that kind of stuff, because clearly there's no point running silently as far as the engine's concerned if you then fire up a generator to run the air conditioning and so on. So that's just really for sort of backup, backup. I mentioned eight knots under electric power. As you open the throttles, once you get past that speed, it understands that you want more power starts up the diesels automatically and then you've got the full power and with both those engines running 270 horsepower each you're looking at nearly 40 knots so it's a proper high performance if it's needed it's got silent running if it's needed it'll do whatever you want as you would expect and actually it's got some pretty decent range i did ask that thinking well it's not really relevant on this sort of boat but actually it is because if these are running in and out all day taking guests in and out what you don't want is to have to keep stopping for fuel and in fact this boat's got about 200 miles of range with those diesel engines you've got about of course eight miles with the electric but what it does is as those diesels are running they're recharging the electric so you know you typically you come out of the harbor on electric power you power up diesel power out towards the yacht as you get close you power back off back to electric and silent run into the yacht so while you're doing the diesel bit you're topping up those electric bits again so that is how the hybrid system works but yeah that's a very nice engine bay it's again it's all custom configurable so however you want these they will build it that's the sea keeper in the center and you can see just what a neat installation that is everywhere absolutely superb so there we go. Let us power that one back down.
and I think we'll step off here, have a wander up the side. It's, it's an impressive machine, isn't it? Nice to see something that is genuinely different and genuinely, well, just so interesting, isn't it? And that's it. Massive thanks to Falcon Tenders for showing me around that one, giving me the full tour and allowing me to show you guys. Huge thanks to you all for watching, of course. Let me know what you think of that one, and we will look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.